Before we get into this production, I would like to thank Kingston for that awesome intro. It doesn't really fit my videos too much because I never really wanted to use an intro, but I absolutely love it nonetheless, and I'm going to be using it in videos for a while. So thank you. Now on to me blabbering on about how good the hyperfire is for 10 minutes. I want you to ignore this paint job that I have applied. Being a supervisor here at Hasbro, I have the right to paint my blasters however I want. Okay, well, that, that's really nice, but, but why did you call me in here, sir? Be because I, I, I know about your rapid strike. You don't need to show it off for the 800th time. We're entering a new generation of elite blasters, in turn, and I think that the rapid strike could use a big upgrade. Your job is to make that upgrade happen. Do it in 10 minutes or you're fired. Uh, okay, sir. I hate this job. All right, it's been 10 minutes, and, and, and I've come up with my design. Okay, check, check this out. It's basically the rapid strike, but it's more compact, and it shoots faster, but it's, it's still the rapid strike, but we can't call it the rapid strike, too, so I called it the hyperfire. Yes, it's basically, it's, it's the rapid strike, too. And now everybody's gonna know that. Right, so if you've been watching my channel for a week, you'll know that I really love the Rapid Strike. I mean, look at it. It's got this gaudy paint job that I spent about two weeks making. But here's the thing. The Rapid Strike isn't perfect. It's a great blaster, definitely. The shell is magnificent, and it's wonderful for integrations and mods and stuff. But it is not a perfect blaster stock. There's a lot of problems with its stock. And so Nerf released a fix for all those problems, stock. And before I even get into this review, I need to make one thing clear. Being 100% objective about this blaster is impossible because it really feels like they made this thing for me. It is the perfect blaster for my arsenal. Saying that a blaster is perfect is honestly a death sentence to my career. But in my eyes, this is the most perfect blaster that I personally could run in a Nerf war. And in this video, I'm gonna explain all the reasons why. So first, starting with the ergonomics, this grip looks really weird because it's a thumb hole stock, but mainly because of this orange decal trigger grip guard thing in the front. I always thought that was kind of like the iconic defining feature of this blaster. It always was when I used to see it, and it still is to this very day. And because it's a thumb hole stock, that's going to drive away a lot of people. However, because of the way that this blaster works and the way that you hold it, it really doesn't get in the way too much. Your wrist is already going to be on the side because of the big chunky stock, so it takes it to its advantage by making the rest of the grip super comfy. It's got fillets in every place that needs it, including right here and all across the front there are no square edges on this grip at all it is a very basic grip design but it actually is a good thing that it's basic because that just makes it more comfortable it, it, it's there's no like extra details that are going to jut out and stab into your hands or your fingers or anything it is a very nice grip while albeit a little bit small considering this is definitely a primary class blaster this is like the most primary class blaster out there the triggers are just magnificent. This magazine release is super responsive with a nice spring in there to make sure that it works. I haven't had any hiccups with the mag release at all. The magazine insertion and the mag well is like absolutely perfect. The magazines slide right in and lock really tightly and when you press this in they pretty much just fall right out of the blaster. It, I mean I'll get to that in a moment. That is super cool but on top of that the rev trigger is nice and responsive and clicky it's a big rev trigger that you can get your whole finger on if you have smaller fingers you could kind of almost put half of your second finger on there but that's not really very comfortable the main grip eh, it's a little bit questionable because it's flat in the front but it's not a super wide trigger i don't know why i said grip it's not a super wide trigger so it doesn't really get in the way that it's flat i mean it's flat in the front and it's also flat on the sides it's kind of like holding onto a square. But yeah, moving on from the main grip, you've got the foregrip, which is a little bit borked because it's right in front of where the mag goes. And if you use a big drum, yeah, this foregrip is kind of unreachable, no matter how big your hands are. But, and well, that's not really that big of a deal because you could also put your hand forwards on the front of this which is surprisingly comfortable. The stock is absolute heaven. It's just about the same length as the Rapid Strike sock, so it's like, it's like that perfect length, just a little bit shorter, but I understand. The batteries are here and they didn't want to make the stock too big, but it is 
extremely comfortable. It has a cheek rest built in, a dedicated cheek rest built into the stock that is just wonderful to put your face on. It is just, oh, it's wonderful. I love this so much. If all that wasn't enough, this blaster works great as a CQB blaster because it isn't very big. It's a little bit smaller than the Rapid Strike, but not as small as the Turbine, but it definitely is small enough to quickly weave around corners and use it to your advantage, especially if you put your hand right up here. I mean, that's what I was saying by the, the other foregrip option, which is a little uncomfortable because of this, uh, this thing right here, but Ah eh, well, you can't have absolute perfection because otherwise I wouldn't be able to complain about this blaster. And complain I will now because I don't know when I'm going to otherwise. This blaster really toned down the amount of tactical points that the Rapid Strike has, which was one reason why I really loved that blaster. You could put so many attachments on it, but what can you put on this? You can put maybe a shield up here or something, and that is absolutely it. There is no barrel attachment. There are no tactical rails on this anywhere else. I mean, yo, what the heck? Why did they do that? They absolutely had the clearance to put more rails. I mean, look at this big dead space right here. Rail could go there, a rail could go here, another one could go on the other side. If they really wanted to, they could put a barrel attachment here. Although this muzzle looks so cool. I, I wouldn't want to give that up. I like that muzzle a lot. And in case everything I've said thus far hasn't been enough for you, it comes with a 25 dart drum. That is probably the most reliable 25 dart drum you will ever get. It is, it is so good. I've never had a jam on that drum that came with the Hyperfire, and I found this at a thrift store. So think about how good the drum is brand new. But one last note before I get onto the firing demo, the sling points are really weird. You have one sling point here, zero across the top, except for right here at the front, and then there's another really big one on the front. It's like, it's almost like they're trying to get you to sling this blaster backwards. So the zombie target is once again going to be used and abused. For the sake of everybody's pleasure, Zombie Target, you are not getting a vacation until you completely disintegrate. But with that said, let's get on to the firing demo. You know what, no, I need more darts. More darts! More darts! Now! <laughs> Feel my oh my god, this stupid drum. Come on. It just blew through the 50 drum in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah! Damn it! It just annihilates the drums. I mean, the 25 dart drum, gone in 10 seconds. The 50 drum, gone in 15. Because I don't know if you noticed, but that rate of fire was not getting bogged down while, while I was firing. It was actually speeding up. This mechanism right here is so efficient that it basically defies the laws of fully automatic nerf blasters. The idea that flywheel blasters would get bogged down over a faster rate of fire because you're gonna be shooting faster. This one goes backwards. This one does not listen to those rules. Now the next thing that I'm going to tell you really has nothing to do with this review stock, but this is for anybody who is in the modding world out there. I, ca I count this differently because I cannot really talk about mo modifying nerf blasters in basic reviews because, well, once you get into the modding world, anyone can do anything with anything, and, and it's just like basic opinions go out the window. Same thing that I said with the rapid strike. But what is something that that makes the rapid strike have a limit? It has a pusher. When that pusher goes forwards and it pushes the dart out, before the next dart can advance, it has to move back. Yeah, you can make it shoot fast, but if that pusher didn't have to move back and it only had to move forward and you could probably very easily put in a micro switch that made it move forward very, very fast, the potential for the hyper fire is out the window. And that is not a figure of speech. It could probably, even with the most basic of basic battery upgrades, I, I can't even begin to imagine how awesome this thing would be. The same opinions here go with the modulus regulator, which unlike this blaster, literally has a selector switch that can make it so that you can shoot whatever you want. Single shot, three shots, or fully automatic, and it has the same rate of fire as this one. 
A uh, quick note, I think the regulator has problems with modifying from what I've heard. I don't know, it might be a difference in the switch or something, who knows. In theory, the regulator is the perfect blaster, but I don't have a regulator. So for the time being, this is the best blaster in my collection. I love it. I can't stress this enough. I love it so much. Even though the Rapid Strike is a more nostalgic blaster for me, and there's probably a whole lot of things that you could do with it that you can't really do with this, I... I adore the hyperfire. I love the hyperfire. I will never not love the hyperfire. If it breaks, I will buy another hyperfire because I need one of these in my collection because that's just how good it is. I can't stress this enough. This blaster is amazing. Now, the only other kind of complaint that I can say just on this in stock form is that it underperforms for an elite blaster. It's getting about 50 to 60 FPS, which is really bad for an elite blaster. But that honestly doesn't detract because this thing is still super fun and I still am going to use this in any war that I'm at. It's just, yeah, it's really hard to find complaints about this. But if you would like to purchase a Hyperfire, I will have a link in the description below. It will go to Amazon and you can get your Hyperfire there. So with that said, subscribe to this channel if you're new, like the video if you enjoyed, and comment down below what blaster would you like me to review next? And what are your opinions on the Hyperfire? With that said, I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Thank you.